Welcome to Raw High Media for you. Remember, you may be a visitor, but never a stranger over here at Raw High Media. Well, guys, today is the day we're going to get into this post-game review of the Colorado Buffaloes versus the Texan Christian University, TCU. What can you say? What can you say? That was an outstanding game from an entertainment value, uh, honestly, from both sides. Uh, I think both teams left some points on the board. I think both teams had some uh, some coaching issues, but... I say this, Colorado made some folks and believers, as Coach Prime said. A whole lot of people doubting Colorado and what they were doing. Hey, they bring up, brought in 80 new players and how are they going to mesh? Remember, if you if you listened to me before, you know, that continuity thing they used to throw out there, that continuity thing. And, and like I said, you may just ball that up and throw it in the trash can. Anyway, let's get into this match. What did I glean from this game personally? I felt like Colorado would perform on offense like they did. My pregame show, I made a clear statement of Shadour Sanders is the second best quarterback in college football. I think I repeated it too. Shadour Sanders, guys, is the second best quarterback in football. In addition to that, Travis Hunter will be the best player on the field. So Colorado had coming into this game the two best players on the field. TCU just didn't have no dudes like that. Let's just be honest about it. Their quarterback, Chandler Morris, he was making some questionable throws. You know, 24-42 for 279 yards, two touchdowns, but he also threw two picks, a uh, costly pick that Travis Hunter. I think the Travis Hunter pick less on Chandler Morris and more of an outstanding play. One that Trevor Woods got, okay, I Chandler Morris, bro. Yeah, that was a bad, that was a bad pass. You should have been able, you should have saw or recognized. Trevor Woods in the end zone. When we talk about questionable, you know, uh, coaching calls and things of that sort, TCU should have clearly ran the ball a lot more. Let's just be honest about it. TCU should have ran the ball more. Flipping over to Colorado, Shadour Sanders. I'm not surprised by this at all. Granted, he broke a record 510 yards. I ain't surprised about this at all. Because what happens is, is that instead of people watching football and understanding that or identifying particular type of skill sets, skill sets, not trying to use who you play to discredit how well you play. Don't tell me about Shadur Sanders playing in FCS when I'm talking about Shadur Sanders and his accuracy. His accuracy has little to nothing to do with where he's playing at. Now, if you was to tell me Shadur Sanders can outrun, you know, everybody in the FCS, your argument then when they go to the Power Five may have a little credence there because obviously they're in Power Five ball you do tend to have more kids that's bigger and faster than in FCS. I mean, I, I think that's a given. That's not how you evaluate quarterback quarterback play. Is he smart? You saw that in this game. Taking what the defense gives him. And let me tell y'all this. There, on just a little tangent. I do not understand what is wrong with quarterbacks not taking what defenses give you. Tom Brady became the greatest of all time because he took what defenses Gave him. Pass to the running back. Pass to the running back. Pass to the running back. Next thing you know, linebacker got to move up. Edelman wide open in the middle of the field. Edelman wide open in the middle of the field. Edelman wide open in the middle of the field. Okay, now they're playing up a little close. Next thing you know, he hit him over, over the top. Bro, man, it's quarterbacking one-on-one. -on -one. Again, I'm still on this tangent. Hey, Lamar Jackson, if you're listening to me, which I'm, you're probably not, bro, hit the check down, bro. Hit the check down. Moving on. Should do a sentence. I... That didn't surprise me. I've been preaching this all along. I think I did a show the top quarterbacks in the Pac-12. I ranked Shadour at number two. It ain't because I'm a homer and, and going for and, and supporting uh, Colorado, uh, simple fact of Coach Prime, which I am a fan because Coach Prime want to see him do well. But it's because I watch Shadour Sanders play the game. I watched him. The man is accurate, man. And an accurate quarterback in college football, when wide receivers are always open anyway, and let me say this again, wide receivers in college football are always open. I don't care who it is. <laughs> they're always open. <laughs> That's the problem with college football and NFL. College football, they're always open. But anyway, he's too accurate. If y'all ain't going to get to him, he's going to eat you alive. Next, Travis Hunter. Man, come on now. That's a dude right there. That's a dog. I guess that's a dog right there. And the wide receiver core that they have now, Let's don't get it twisted. It ain't Ohio State's receiving core. With the accuracy of Shador Sanders and the talent that they do possess at the wide receiver position, 510 yards, I'm not surprised by that. I, hey, let me say, I'll put it to you this way. 
Shador Sanders will have another 500-yard passing game this season. It's just, it's just going to happen, especially in that conference. <laughs> it's going to go up and down. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if he thought he has a game of 650 yards passing. I would not be surprised. Will not. I mean, honestly, if they had caught one or two of balls, then he may would have bust 600 this game. So let's just be honest about it. That's all fine and dandy. You know, you got Dylan Edwards. I mean, what can you say? Freshman. I told I hate doing that. I told, well, no, I don't. I do like doing I told you so. But in a, remember, I told you about Dylan Edwards. Remember, the USC guy, you know, they freshman that they had and all what he did. Remember Zachariah Brent for USC? I said, who, you know, who's who's going to have the better game? Or remember Zachariah Brent from USC? And he had that big game against San Jose State. Man, he was just all over the field. I, I did a comparison, and I told you that Dylan Edwards is a faster guy. And what did he do? Showed out. Showed up and showed out. Four touchdowns, 135 yards receiving. Brother, bro, listen, I know a lot of people don't remember Debo Samuel when he played at South Carolina. Listen, man, that's Debo, Debo Samuel. You know what I'm saying? That's that's Debo Samuel. Percy Harvin. He's also a Percy Harvin. I mean, Urban Meyer compared Percy Harvin to Travis Hunter. But Dylan Edwards, he Percy Harvin S also. That hey, y'all saw it. If he just get a bit of daylight, he gone. But let's let's slow down real quick. You know what I'm saying? Everything y'all ain't all roses. Let's get let's get that straight. Everything ain't all roses. Man, that defense was terrible. Let's just be honest about it. Colorado defense, bro, he was terrible. You know, I mentioned before that I was worried about their run defense. You know, some people talked to me about that. You know, they thought that they would be okay with run defense. No, no, they were bad. That defense was bad. Now, you make big plays, you got some in it, you got two picks. Look, understand this, because USC got credit last year. They, you know, they got people gave them credit about generating turnovers, but that defense was bad. Getting turnovers, listen to me close, getting turnovers does not mean you, you are playing good defense. It don't mean that. Getting turnovers is good. It's great defensive plays. But if you're playing good defense, teams ain't going all up and down the field on you. Think about that, man. Both of those turnovers that they got from TCU, TCU was in the red zone. They didn't went up and down the field on them. And they got a turnover. Bro, good defense is stopping somebody from going up and down the field on, them, on you. And if you get a turnover, then that's good. That's good and that's great. But you would much rather stop people from going up and down the field on you. You feel me? You know, just y'all can get at me, and, it, and, and and that's fine. We can have this back and forth in the comments. I am a firm believer, firm believer. If they're not four wide and you got any type of athletic linebacker, you need to put three linebackers on the field, especially for a team like Colorado. You need to put three linebackers on the field. You have to stop the run. Because what's going to happen is people, they're going to get smart. They're going to slow the game down. They're going to just keep running the ball. That's keeping the ball out of your offensive hands. If the offense ain't getting in the ball, getting the ball they can't score. They can't score. And they're just going to run it down your throat. Let's be honest. If TCU had ran the ball more, this game may have been a little bit different. It could have been. Put three linebackers on the field, man. You're playing man anyway. Put it in. College football. It don't matter. How many times y'all seen people drop eight and they still complete the pass? How many times y'all see that? Put seven in cover. They still complete the pass. Because in college football, wide receivers are always open. Always open. Getting pressure is what stops the pass for the most part in college football. Pressure. Pressure the quarterback. Get him off his spot. So go and put three linebackers out there on the field, man. Put three linebackers on. Four, three. Put three linebackers on the field. Blitz one. Blitz two. Let the other one cover the middle of the field. Watch out for the tight end. Bro, they was getting they, they was getting busted anyway. It was getting the tight end was busting them anyway. Put a third, put three linebackers on the field. Two defensive ends. If it was me, I go Derek McClendon, and I mm, do not drop Jordan Dominique back in coverage. Look like the Baltimore Ravens out there got Adolfo Adolfo Oway uh, falling back in coverage. Oh my God, I couldn't stand it. I saw that. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. Jordan Dominique, rush the passer, put McClendon on the other end, rush the passer, put your three linebackers on the field, and stop the run. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get upset because this, that point is really less about Colorado and more about this 
stupid philosophy that I've seen here a lot of D coordinators go with. And I know why, because the people passing the ball all the time. I get it. NFL, I get it. College, I mean, if they ain't four wide, man, put your three linebackers on the field. Concede the fact that, just accept it. I, we ain't locking them. You ain't locking nobody up in college football. Pressure the quarterback. Man, it ain't really that hard, bro. I, I done seen it too many times. It ain't that hard, bro. Anyway, I get off my soapbox on that. I get off my soapbox on that. Special teams, Colorado. I knew it was going to be a problem when I went to the spring game and I saw it. I knew it was going to be a problem. And it was a problem of the day. You got to fix that. You can't. Your special teams can't be that bad. <sighs> Let's be on. Colorado won this game because they got Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. They had the two best players on the field. They may have had the three best players, including Dylan Edwards. Uh, so you can't always hope that Shadur is going to carry the load and win, win games for you. You can't do that. You know, you, you're going to have to do better. Now, granted, uh, I think a, a linebacker that they just got, one of the leading tackles, I think it used to be, used to play for Texas. I think it was a leading tackle. They also played with Tennessee or Arizona State. You know, they just got him. So that'll help. I'm hoping that that would help shore up that running defense. You know, nothing that can't be fixed. Don't get it twisted. These things can be fixed. As far as Jimmy Horn, Jimmy Horn made me scratch my head a few times. He had a good game, whatever the case may be. I'm kind of splitting hairs here. Um, but well, I'm kind of nitpicking here. But Jimmy Horn, it seemed like he was a tad bit hesitant. I didn't see that explosion from him on a lot of catches that he caught. I just He seemed to be a half step slow for some reason. I don't know what it is um, or what it was or maybe, I, you know, maybe it's me. But, yeah, he looked a half step slower. And Xavier Weaver, he played an uh, excellent game. I, I like it. You know what I'm saying? He did a good job. But uh, they got Nebraska coming up next. Nebraska ain't going to play around. Nebraska want to play hard nose, hit you in the mouth football, and that worries me. Colorado and they running the ball because let's don't get it twisted. Nebraska lost, but they could easily beat Colorado next week. <laughs> they could easily beat them. Hand the ball off, hand the ball off, hand the ball off, hand the ball off, hand the ball off. That's what they can do. Next thing you know, they went on an eight minute drive and they scored a touchdown. <laughs> you come back, don't score because you ain't gonna score every time you get the ball. Next thing you know. Hand the ball off, hand the ball off, hand the ball off. Now it's a field position game. They keeping you in long fields. And they eating up clock. It's about matchups, man. It's about matchups. They got to do something. I'm sure they're going to address that run defense. But anyway, it's your boy Raw High Media for you. Remember, I don't present the information. I'm trying to have a conversation. Y'all get at me in my comments. Let me know what you thought about the game and how you feel about it. Hey, tell me, if my, is my analysis off? Am I wrong about some of the things that I saw, man? Y'all get at me, man. This your boy. We out. Peace.